again, I said I was going off Facebook, but then you guys sent in these really good questions, and this one had a lot of emotion with it, so I just want to answer it. Because I can, I have a, so, I tell people that I work with who have serious chronic pain, unbelievable amount of compassion from me on this because of what I went through. So when someone shares this with me, I want to answer. I'm not going to share the person's name. Scott, I was diagnosed with four ruptured discs, DDD, lots of arthritis down my spine and severe spinal stenosis in October of last year. By the way, uh, those are the two of those diagnoses are what I had. And I think that's why the person is asking. I do water exercises and other exercises which truly help keep things loose. But can anybody explain or please tell me why this horrible pain spreads from my lower spine? And she says all the way to the hips and down into her hamstrings. And so there's a lot of desperation there. Scott, any suggestions? Um, <laughs> yes. There's too much that I would want to say here. I mean, I can't give you like this clear path to healing right here, but I can, let me just put these, put these considerations out there in your consciousness and just let sit with them for a second. These are the kinds of things that I see all the time from people. And it's exactly what I did is that you treat it as a physical thing. And then you, you literally look for resources outside yourself or even things that you can digest that will treat it as it's a physical thing and then you get some level of relief at the most so if you pull so what i did is i pulled back and i journaled all of that most people don't do that but i spent like a good month, couple of months journaling everything that i was doing that was treating it like a physical thing and watching just how little pain relief i was getting and how unsustainable it was so if you can imagine i'm in my rv and I'm journaling like, okay, I just did back exercises on a one of those things where it stretches your back out, you know, or an inversion table that I had, or various somatic movements, yoga. I mean, at one point, I think I tried, I mean, it felt in Christ. I want to say almost everything you can imagine, but there's there's posture, all that. I'm journaling all that. So I'd say I just did my back inversion table and I'd just give a reading on the pain level before and after. And I'd notice I would get a little bit of relief from some of these things, which then would reinforce in the mind that it is physical slightly. And this is where it gets really confusing for people right there because they may already be coming with the belief that this is physical. So if they get even a little bit of relief from these things, that are designed to treat it as a physical thing, it can reinforce it. But what I had to do is step back and look at this from a different perspective. By stepping back and journaling everything, I saw that nothing that I was doing by treating it as a physical thing was really getting to the root of it. And we've been so conditioned now here in the West that we're at some some of us aren't even concerned with getting to the root of something. We think the root of something is literally just a physical abnormality somewhere, that that is the root. And so when you think of it that way, you're very likely then to go to Western medicine because that's how you think about it. And a, a little caveat here is, is that you could have an injury that is traumatic, that is that where the physical aspect of that is. Even Dr. John Sarno says that, who one of the pioneers in this area. But what he also says is that in his view, a, a great number of these chronic pain situations, the reason people are not getting real relief is because the root is emotional and psychological. Now, when I first heard that, I just like balked at that a little bit because what I heard is like, you I mean there's something that I've missed that big? that it would create this level of pain. You have to kind of get over the shaming element at first. There's a little bit of like, oh, I'm being shamed by someone who's saying, this is not physical. It's emotional or psychological, something that I miss. Get over that hump, guys. If you allow shame to take you down, 
on the front end, you won't even begin this exploration. See, shame has a way of just shutting us off from this. And we can even get reactive from the shame when someone says this could be emotional or psychological. It's like our defenses come up and then we can't even hear the person. So your first thing to deal with is anything that you're experiencing right now that feels like it's shame. Deal with that. Because if you don't get over that hump, you may miss the treasure here. <laughs> so by stepping back, and I'm asking this person to do that, step back and look at what you're doing and notice that it isn't giving you much relief. And then notice how your mind doubles down on that. And it says, well, then I just haven't found the right treatment yet, the right medication, which could be the case. But in many cases, it's not that at all. It's that even if you find a different treatment, if it treats it as a physical thing, it's still only going to give a certain level of relief. By stepping back and being open to what I'm saying here, a new pathway arises for you. And let me just speak to you real, I've said this before, but I'm going to speak just to this person here and anyone like this. When we are young, we cannot be authentic in our relationships with our parents and others. We have to push down, repress, cover up certain feelings that do not work in relationships like anger, fear, shame, guilt. We all do it. Science tells us this. Science has been telling us that we're all doing it, that they've been studying it, and they took it even further than that. That in study in the last 10 years, they found that emotional repression in this way is actually a major contributing factor to chronic pain, illness, mental health issues. So you step back, take in that research. I mean, educate yourself if you have to. If you're someone who follows science and has been following science and it's been leading you back to the doctor over and over and over again to treat it like a physical issue, but it's not working, step back and see it potentially as an emotional or psychological issue. Just appeal to your common sense a little bit more. These feelings, these emotions, these thoughts that we repress, they don't just vanish. They don't just go away so you never have to deal with it. They're not processed, so they tend to go to a vulnerable area some contracted area, some physical pain, it's repressed. So it's going to come up as not the feeling. The very fact that it's repressed is why it's coming up as something that you do not recognize as emotional. You feel it as pain, as contraction. And this is how the repression continues. Because you didn't know you were repressing it before or you didn't have access to it. Now you still don't think you have access to it because what's showing up is a physical pain or a contraction. It's not showing up as anger. So it would fool you very easily into thinking it's not emotional. And so the repression continues. And then you go to the doctor to get the doctor to help you on something that they're not trained to help you on. Emotional repression. <laughs> And so they give you medicines and they give you treatments. Do you see the problem? When you start to recognize the manifestation of chronic pain or contraction, that's when you want to at least do a little test on whether this pain is actually emotional repression. Here's a simple test or a few tests. I've done this before. And any of you can do this. Feel into the area that's contracted or that where there's physical pain and just rest with it first. Don't do anything with it. Just feel it and allow it. And then just bring up mom and dad, start there. And as you're feeling into it, just say, I could feel and express anger directly to them. And if you get any version of a no, then there's an emotional repression, anger there. And then I have inquiries for that which I'm not going to get into, but, the, but if you just got to know, don't overlook that. That's not a coincidence. 
the reason you got to know is because your consciousness has actually literally programmed itself into repressing a feeling and that feeling has thoughts on it that are conditioned to get you to not the feel to not feel the feeling and not express it and you learn that as a child and chances are you kept doing that to a certain degree in other relationships and the repression remained okay so the, you know you said can i help you i can only help people who will do the stepping back if you're not open to stepping back and looking at this differently and then doing some inquiry on some of your belief systems that may be leading you astray then i, I can't help you just reading the reason there's so much compassion as i was reading her question is because it just has that same sort of frantic energy that i see in so many people as they run through all the medical concepts that they've that they've been told like it's a ruptured disc that's the reason for your pain you have lots of arthritis that's the reason you have pain see i've got mris here i'm a doctor to show you and then because it's physical you can in their own question going back to physical things like water aerobics or it's exactly what i did and frankly all those things were really good for my overall well-being like stretching out the spine or somatic movement yoga all good healthy just didn't go deeply into the repression period it wasn't until i started to do inquiry somatic based inquiry that i got pain relief and i have the same conditions that you have essentially the questioner